Welcome everybody. In today's short video I'm going to share something with you that is very simple and very effective. You can learn this in about five or six minutes and it's a great foundation for using any kind of impact weapon. The theme of today is the good old umbrella. A quick background on this. In World War II there was a division of the Allied Forces called the SOE or Special Operations Executive and they were tasked with training and equipping spies to be dropped behind enemy lines in countries like France, Holland, Italy and so on, even Germany itself. These people were unarmed, they received very rudimentary training and their goal was to gather information. They couldn't be armed and so they were taught the basics of hand-to-hand -hand combat and how to use different items as weapons. Everything from you know the obvious things like knives and handguns if they should get their hands on them to innocuous items like matchboxes and books and of course umbrellas and that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to be taking six simple movements that were taught by the SOE during World War II and were proven to be highly effective. You can literally disable or kill a man using an umbrella like this and in the next 10 minutes I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Ready? Let's go. In many traditional martial arts, when they're dealing with bludgeoning weapons or impact weapons like sticks, batons, perhaps even umbrellas, there's usually a ready position. We call it the home position, and it's the position in which you hold the weapon prior to deploying it, and in those pauses in between to basically reset. And for us, it's the home position. You know, we would hold a baton like this near the shoulder in a ready position, so we're good to go from any angle. However, for the purposes of a street weapon, an innocuous improvised weapon like an umbrella, it makes no sense to get into a ready position because you don't want to alert your opponent as to what you're doing. So the start position when you're working with an umbrella for us is usually like this. It's simply held innocuously in front of the body in both hands like this. Alternatively, even at your side, like that, where you're just dangling the umbrella down, but very quickly you can bring it up from there and have it in the ready position and ready to attack. So let's jump right in. This is a six step drill which you can learn very easily and there are two ways you can apply this. One is to apply it exactly as you learn it. Simply take these movements, string them together, go on the attack and you will win. The other way to use them of course is as a template so that you can take the movements, deconstruct them and use them in different sequences with different applications. So, for example, a strike can become a parry, and so on. But I'm going to keep it really simple for today, short and sweet. From our ready or guard position, which is either here or down at your side, the first strike is very simple. I take a step forward with my left foot, and I jab or rip the umbrella upward. This is called the upward rip, for obvious reasons. And it's a step forward, chambering the umbrella near my hip and ripping up, out and forward as I do, like that. The goal is simply to strike your opponent anywhere in the throat, under the chin, uh, you know, base of the jawline and rip the head up and back. Depending on the type of umbrella, it may even be lethal. So you've got to be careful here, obviously. If it's an umbrella with a metal tip or spike, you could pierce the bottom of the jaw, drive right up into the brain and kill somebody. So do be careful with this. If it's something a little blunter and it has a plastic cap, well, it's going to give him a very nasty shock. Even if you don't catch the face or the chin, it causes him to recoil and his head moves back. So the movement is very simple. From here, I'm stepping forward, chambering at my hip and jabbing straight up. And with practice, you want that to become one smooth, quick movement. I'm going to do it from the side. So from here, you're simply stepping forward or lunging forward and going like that, straight up under the jaw and ripping up into the face. Needless to say, this same movement can also be used as a parry. If somebody is, for example, at close range, stabbing a knife toward me, trying to grab me, uh, trying to hit me, then that upward movement can also be used as a parry. I simply change the trajectory instead of ripping straight up. I rip up, sidestep and push like that in order to parry something to the side. The next strike is called the double punch, and as the name suggests, I'm taking both hands 
and simply punching straight forward. So from the upward rip, which I did first, I'm stepping in and rip up under the jaw, under the face. I pull this back to my chest to chamber it as far as possible. And from here I punch straight out. And the goal here is to smash it into the throat, the teeth, the nose, pretty much anywhere in the throat or face area. And the rationale behind that is when you rip up, somebody's hands are going to come up, their head is going to go back, and everything is open and available here. So from that position, you're simply re-chambering, boom, and going straight into the face. Needless to say, you need to be advancing, almost darting into the person as you do this. I'm standing relatively still for the sake of the camera, but in reality, through this six movement sequence, you'd be advancing probably six feet on your opponent and driving home every strike as you move forward. The goal is to blast him back and stay on top of him as you go. So just to recap, we're stepping forward, doing the upward rip, pulling back and jamming this straight into the face or the throat. Next strike on the menu is the forehand swing, and you don't need any imagination to figure that one out. It's simply bringing the umbrella up and around and hitting with a forehand downward stroke about 45 degrees, smashing into the side of the head, the side of the neck, possibly the collarbone, pretty much anywhere in this area on the side of your opponent's head. And the sequence, of course, to get there is to rip up, driving his head back and forcing him onto the back foot, smash straight into his face, and as he stumbles back, what I'm doing is I'm taking the umbrella and basically swinging it around my head like this. So I'm not just moving it from here, I'm creating momentum by swinging it around, letting go. And as I smash down, this hand comes to my shoulder. You will see why in a minute, because I need to get to the umbrella again. So I'm smashing down from there into his neck, into his face, and just letting him have it with the full weight of the umbrella with a very powerful forehand stroke. So the sequence from beginning to where we are now is very simple. We're going upward rip, double punch, forehand swing. Upward rip, double punch, forehand swing. The next strike you're going to learn in this sequence is called the straight stab. And again, it's pretty obvious what that is. You're just jabbing the umbrella straight into his midsection, aiming for the solar plexus, possibly the sternum, but softer tissue around the solar plexus or stomach, possibly even groin, is an option. If he's bent over or he's considerably shorter, you could also drive that into the face or the throat. Because you've ripped up, you've smashed into his throat, you've hit him with the umbrella, he's stumbling backward. And now I've got to go after him and drive home the attack. So from the end of the swing that I've just done, the forehand swing, from here I pull this back straight to my hip as I'm drawing a bow, and as I do, my hand comes from my shoulder to find the umbrella right here. Notice my shoulders are shrugged, I'm in a predatorial stance, light on my toes, protecting my face as I move forward. And from here, I simply jab straight out, bang, using both hands like that. Think of a rifleman holding a rifle with a bayonet on the end of it, it's exactly the same movement. And that's why I was taught that way during World War II. This was a no-brainer. You were simply going, boom, in like that, and so if you look at that from the side, essentially, I've ripped up, double punched, done the forehand swing, from here it comes straight back, and I just jab straight in, going for soft tissue, either the body, face, throat, groin, whatever presents itself, doesn't matter. And we have two simple movements left. So far, we've done the upward rip the double punch, the forehand swing, and the straight stab. From here, I'm going to deploy and use the back of the umbrella, the hilt, the handle. I'm going to take another slide forward, keeping my legs in the same configuration, my feet don't switch, and all I'm doing here is throwing this up and over, as though I'm throwing an elbow strike into somebody's face. The movement, the motion is the same, recruiting the hips, the momentum of the body, twisting right in, but the goal is to Think of hitting with the elbow, but what you're really doing is hitting with the butt or the hilt of the umbrella. It may be a hook like this, it doesn't really matter. It may be an umbrella that just has a straight pommel at the end. Whatever you're holding in your hand, you're thinking of smashing that and ripping right across and hitting the person across the face, across the head. It could be an outstretched arm, whatever presents itself. Don't worry too much about targeting. Just go for the soft stuff. So in sequence, from the beginning, we're essentially going 
Upward grip, double punch. Forehand swing, straight stab, hilt strike. Like that. And the last movement is super simple as well. You'll recall that so far we've done upward grip, double punch, forehand swing, straight stab, hilt strike. From here, logically, the most powerful strike I can produce is a backhand swing, and that is our last movement. However, from here, I'm not just pushing it out or letting it go and swinging across, because I don't want to rely too much on the power only of my arm. I want to recruit my hips, my legs, and even this arm, if possible. So what I do here, and there's a little hack that will help you with this. If you've gone through here, you've done the jab, you've done the hilt strike. Now from here, holding onto the umbrella, all I do is I turn my hand to face me as I'm answering the phone, and from here, as I swing and I push out, I literally throw my arm out, my left arm, to help accelerate the umbrella out and down from there. You'll notice that my hand again comes back to my shoulder. It's there to protect me, it's there to shield me, so that in the process of using this, I also have my live hand or my other hand free in order to trap, interfere, shield, carry, whatever I need to do. And so that from this position, I can easily rail down my own arm and find the umbrella. I may be in a situation where I'm really close or something goes wrong with the plan. And in between, he grabs hold of the umbrella or grabs hold of me. And I need to be able in that melee to be able to find the bits and if we're in a situation where I'm staggering around, we're wrestling, he's grabbing me, hitting me, doing whatever it is, and I'm trying to grab in all the chaos, you very often miss. So we use a principle called railing, which means we always bring our hand back to our body, and from the shoulder we rail down, so that even if this is moving around, it's being jerked around, I can find it by simply following my arm. That's the simplest way I can explain it. So that backhand strike is very, very powerful, and of course it's an easy one, because from here, it's already set up and chambered, good to go. What I'm doing is I'm turning the palm in, throwing this arm out, and accelerating forward like that with a final strike. From here, it's very easy to either bring the umbrella back into the ready position, or to segue into a continuous attack, where I'm bringing this back and going into a straight stab, swinging it around and going into a forehand stroke, swinging from here into another hilt strike, whatever I need to do, it doesn't really matter. And that is the sequence, simple as that, six movements. From the beginning, you're standing in the ready position, you're sliding forward and doing the upward rip, the double punch, the forehand swing, the straight stab, the hilt strike, and the backhand swing. And there it is, it's as simple as that. This simple sequence can of course be extrapolated into using anything. A baton, extendable baton, even something like a machete if you have to. It's very, very effective. And the whole, the goal of this is to string these movements together so they become relatively seamless. So you're not seeing them in isolation. They're a combination, which you're basically unloading on somebody very quickly. Even if only one or two of these get through, it's going to injure him and allow you to get away. Of course, guys, these six movements are extraordinarily basic. They are fundamental. They're very simple. You can learn them quickly and easily. And for that reason, they work. They're easily recalled under pressure. They're extremely powerful. And they, in most cases, recruit the power of your entire body. There are no fancy fencing movements. There are no twirls going on or you know, anything fancy where there is a possibility in a real fight of losing a weapon. Here, we're sticking to the weapon. We're staying close. We're gluing to the opponent. And most importantly, guys, we're recruiting the movement of the hips the forward momentum you're charging into your opponent. You need to view this six step sequence as being a life and death situation. You're essentially choosing to pull the trigger and just going through those six movements as quickly as you can, one after the other, and chasing him down in order to drive him off and make him fall so that you can get away. Bruce Lee famously said, I do not fear the man who knows 10,000 kicks. I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And that's what this comes down to. So go and grab your brolly, sun, rain, whatever it is, and start practicing these six movements. It's a good investment.
Thank you everybody. See you in the next video.